Hello. In this video, I'm going to share more about the Wittig reaction. We're going to focus on the phosphorus illids themselves. Uh, so, uh, in the last video, I talked about the mechanism, sort of an overview of this Wittig reaction, where an aldehyde or ketone, and I used acetone as my example, reacts with this thing on my arrow, which is a phosphorus illid, uh, in a reaction that exchanges the oxygen with the, the carbon group on the phosphorus. Uh, these phosphorus illids are nucleophilic at carbon, and, so, and they have two different resonance contributors. I actually have a fondness for the charge separated resonance contributor, but both of them are fine. Uh, and in this video, we're going to talk about how they can be synthesized. Right? So uh, the synthesis of a phosphorus illid. Um, let's do a generic, uh, well, no, let's, let's do a specific phosphorus illid. Let's say that we were interested in producing this Phosphorus illid, it has one, two, three carbon atoms on it. Right? So this synthesis starts from a compound that has those three carbons and, and a leaving group like a chlorine or bromine or something. And then this reaction is. Uh, this compound is reacted with triphenylphosphine, though other, other phosphines, but triphenylphosphine tends to be a, a phosphine of choice. Phosphines are uh, the phosphorus analog of amines. So it's just a phosphorus with three hydrocarbon groups on them. Uh, and this turns out to be an SN2 reaction. That means it has sort of all of the limitations and, and strengths and limitations of the SN2 reaction. And we're not quite there yet because initially we've only displaced the chlorine. It's still hanging out around there somewhere. Um, and the phosphorus has a positive charge and we still, we don't have the negative charge. We don't have the nucleophilic center on the carbon. Uh, the next step is to use a base and the base deprotonates this hydrogen next to the phosphorus to form the illid. Uh, and there are a number of bases that are used. These are generally really strong bases. In uh, my experience, I did a lot of like potassium terp butoxide uh, as a base. Uh, this works out pretty well for some illid, for the formation of some illids. Other kinds of illids, you know, butyl lithium, you know, NH2 minus type bases. Uh, most alkoxides are not particularly strong enough, though, though terp butoxide works for, for some, right? Uh, so here we go. Generally, uh, this intermediate compound is a, what's something called a phosphonium salt. These are, these are, these are often stable. And so they can be, can be stored or even sometimes purchased. Um, the illid, is often not stable and so needs to be generated in situ and that in situ phrase means that in in the site of the reaction it needs to be generated right where we need it um, because uh it starts off with an sn2 reaction generally primary halides are going to be your best bet here secondary could be made to work on tertiary or a non-starter uh, Yeah, I do want to share just sort of one other kind of interesting example. Like if you have an ester and you have a halogen alpha to that ester, you can you you can do you can do a triphenylphosphine for our SN2 reaction. And uh, in this case, I can get away with a weaker base. In fact, I'm gonna use sodium methoxide. Uh, I have a because that's the alkoxy group here. I have a variety of reasons to, to want to use that. Um, and then it's just interesting because these illids, these illids are, are referred to so, as so-called stabilized illids. And the idea is in stabilized illids can hang around for a while. Uh, and the reason that they are stabilized is that in addition to the resonance contributor where we have a negative charge 
on the carbon, positive charge on the phosphorus, there is also an additional residence contributor involving the carbonyl group. Uh, and so elids in which there, there is an electron withdrawing group attached to the same carbon as the uh, leaving group are conforms, you know, we get stabilized elids, which are, uh, can have, have an impact on, on the success of the reaction. So you can actually have a lot wide range of functional groups in the elid. In the next video, I'm going to share examples of how to synthesize specific alkenes. And so choosing which part of the alkene is the elid and which part is the, um, comes from the carbonyl compound. Thanks for watching.